Hi dear students, so far we were discussing about trigonometry, isn't it? In this class, I am going to discuss about trigonometric equations. As we all know, what is an equation, isn't it? Equation is any expression which involves an equal to sign in it. But coming on to the trigonometric equation, there is a small difference from the usual equations. In the trigonometric equation, the expressions are those expressions which involves trigonometric functions. So here we are going to evaluate or here we are going to deal with those equations which has trigonometric functions in it and we are going to solve it also. So whenever we solve a trigonometric equation, we get a solution of it which is an angle, isn't it? Of course we are def we define trigonometric functions in some angles. So whenever we solve trigonometric equations, the solutions will be angles. So if the angle is in between 0 and 2 pi, that is 0 less than or equal to x less than 2 pi, then it is called a principal solution. So whenever we are able to restrict our solution to the interval 0 to pi, then it is called a principal solution. And whenever the integer n comes in this solution or whenever we can generalize this solution to a whole set of angles which means that we know that the period of sine function and cosine function is 2 pi isn't it so if we are able to generate solutions which are, which are repeating in any particular interval so then we can say that that solution is a general solution so a general solution is nothing but a solution involving the integer n so if we put different values for that integer integer and we get different different solution at different in instance so such a solution is called general solution and any solution and a particular solution which is restricted in the interval 0 to pi is called principal solution so we shall discuss various types of trigonometric equations and how to solve them for principal solution as well as for general solution by discussing several examples so in order to discuss about principal solutions let us discuss about the example number 18 find the principal solutions of the equation sin x is equal to root 3 by 2 so we have to solve sin x is equal to root 3 by 2 and we have to which is mentioned that we have to discuss about the principal solution which means that the solution must be between 0 and 2 pi isn't it so in between 0 and 2 pi the solution must lie so sin x is equal to root 3 by 2 directly we know that sin pi by 3 equal to root 3 by 2 isn't it so x equal to pi by 3 is a solution okay now again we know that here we have sin and cosec are positive, isn't it? Also, this is pi. Therefore, sin pi minus pi by 3 will be sin pi by 3 itself by the quadrant trick. If you don't know this method, just refer the previous video. The link is attached in the description so you can easily watch that. So, sin and cosec are positive in the second quadrant. So, we have sin pi minus pi by 3 is sin pi by 3 itself. Therefore, sin pi minus pi by 3 also will be equal to sin pi by 3, which is equal to root 3 by 2, isn't it? Now, what is pi minus pi by 3? That is sin 2 pi by 3 is also equal to root 3 by 2. Note that 2 pi by 3 is also in between 0 and 2 pi, isn't it? Therefore, x equal to 2 pi by 3 is also a solution which is a principal solution for the equation sin x is equal to root 3 by 2 so now we can consider any other solution if the solution is greater than or outside this interval 0 and 2 pi then definitely that solution cannot be a principal solution so a principal solution means a solution which lies in the interval 0 and 2 pi and you can see that these two solutions are exactly lying in the interval 0 and 2 pi hence they are principal solutions now we shall find the solution principal solutions of the equation tan x is equal to minus 1 by root 3 as we know that tan pi by 6 is equal to 1 by root 3 but we have here we are asked to find the principal solutions of the equation tan x is equal to minus 1 by root 3 isn't it as we can see that here tan pi minus pi by 3 is tan sorry tan pi minus pi by 6 is tan pi by 6 itself except for the sign 
also in this quadrant tangent is a negative function hence you can easily see that tan pi minus pi by 6 is nothing but minus because here we have tan negative now the difference is taken from an integral multiple of pi so it will become tan pi by 6 so negative tan pi by 6 is nothing but minus 1 by root 3 hence you can easily see that this is a solution of this equation also pi minus pi by 6 that is tan pi minus pi by 6 is nothing but 5 pi by 6 is equal to minus 1 by root 3 hence you can easily understand that this is a principal solution as 5 pi by 6 is, li is lying in the interval 0 less than or equal to x less than 2 pi so 5 pi by 6 lies in the interval this so that this is a principal solution and also you know that 2 pi this is 2 pi so 2 pi minus pi by 6 will lie in this quadrant in this quadrant also tan is negative so we have tan 2 pi minus pi by 6 is equal to minus tan pi by 6 isn't it since the difference is taken from an integral multiple of pi also in the third fourth quadrant tangent function is negative so it will become minus 1 by root 3 again so this is also a solution of this equation and also you can see that 2 pi minus pi by 6 is actually 12 pi minus pi by 6 is equal to 11 pi by 6 which is lies in the interval 0 and 2 pi so tan 11 pi by 6 is equal to minus 1 by root 3 hence we can say that 11 pi by 6 is also a principal solution of this equation as 11 pi by 6 lies in the interval 0 and 2 pi therefore the two principal solutions for the equation are x is equal to 5 pi by 6 and x is equal to 11 pi by 6 are the two principal solutions now we shall discuss about general solutions as you know that general solutions involve the integer n which helps us to substitute various values for that n and results in various particular solutions like principal solution and other solutions so there are three important theorems which helps us to derive the general solutions at different in different instance so first one is sin x is equal to sin y which implies the solution general solution is given by it is of the form x equal to n pi plus minus 1 the whole raised to n into y and n is an element of ether which means that n can have any value from 1 2 or minus 1 minus 2 any integer value so it helps us to generate different particular solutions let it be there the second theorem is if cos x is equal to cos y implies x equal to 2 n pi plus or minus y where n element of z and the third one is if x not equal to 2n plus 1 by by 2 which is we define we restricted x because we are going to define tan x we know that tan x is not defined for odd multiples of pi by 2 then tan x is equal to tan y implies x equal to n pi plus y n element of z so these are the general solutions in these three different cases now we shall uh, discuss we shall understand these theorems or how we should apply these theorems in different problems to get general solutions by doing some examples now we shall do the example number 20 here we are asked to find the solution of sin x is equal to minus root 3 by 2 we know that sin pi by 3 is equal to root 3 by 2 isn't it so minus sin pi by 3 will be minus root 3 by 2 so in this equation we have to find x such that sin x is equal to minus root 3 by 2 so it is nothing but minus sin pi by 3 so now we can easily calculate we know that minus sin pi by 3 minus sin pi by 3 is nothing but we can use the quadrant method to we substitute this as sin pi plus pi by 3 isn't it since pi plus pi by 3 will lie in the third quadrant and sine function is negative in the third quadrant minus sin pi by 3 will be sin pi plus pi by 3 isn't it so minus sin pi by 3 equal to sin pi plus pi by 3 so we can easily resubstitute this quantity as sin pi plus pi by 3 and it is equal to sin 4 pi by 3 
therefore the entire equation reduces to sin x is equal to sin 4 pi by 3 which is of the form sin x is equal to sin y and the solution is given by x is equal to n pi plus minus 1 raised to n into instead of y we have 4 pi by 3 isn't it 4 pi by 3 where n element of is this will be the general solution of the given equation also note that we can take sine 2 pi minus pi by 3 also here similarly we can take various kinds of solutions here it doesn't change the general solution because the general solution changes according to the value of n change so you can choose any value or any solution here so that the general solution will show a slight difference but it doesn't matter it will be balanced while we put the values of n so this is the general solution of example number 20 Coming on to example number 21, we have to solve cos x is equal to 1 by 2. We already know that cos x is equal to 1 by 2 happens when cos pi by 3 occurs. That is cos x is equal to 1 by 2 equal to cos pi by 3. So we can take these two sides together. It will become cos x is equal to cos pi by 3, which is of the form cos x is equal to cos y. It implies x is equal to 2n pi plus or minus instead of y we have pi by 3 where n element of z. so this will be the general solution for cos x is equal to 1 by 2 now we shall do example number 22 the question is that solve tan 2x is equal to minus cot x plus pi by 3 we know that this is of the form minus cot y isn't it since let us call this x plus pi by 3 as an angle y then we have minus cot y is equal to tan pi by 2 plus y isn't it so we have minus cot y is nothing but tan pi by 2 plus y hence on substituting that quantity here it will become tan pi by 2 plus x plus pi by 3 isn't it so we have tan 2x is equal to tan pi by 2 plus x plus pi by 3 okay now we shall just simplify this thing so that it will become tan 2x is equal to tan 5 pi by 6 plus x which is of the form tan x is equal to tan y isn't it when tan x is equal to tan y the general solution is of the form x is equal to n pi plus y so 2x is equal to the general solution is given by 2x is equal to n pi plus instead of y we have 5 pi by 2 plus x 5 pi by 2 plus x so this is the general solution now again we can cancel this x and 2x to get x is equal to n pi plus 5 pi by 2 where n element of z. so this will be the general solution for the given equation now we shall solve example number 23 the question is that solve this quantity we shall just rearrange this quantity by associating sin 2x and sin 6x so it will become sin 2x plus sin 6x minus sin 4x is equal to 0 now it is of the form sin a plus sin b it is equal to 2 sin a plus b by 2 cos a minus b by 2 isn't it so it will become 2 sin a plus b by 2 2x plus 6x 8x by 2 is equal to 4x into cos a minus b by 2 2x minus 6x minus 4x minus 4x by 2 is equal to minus 2x so cos minus 2x so this into minus sin 4x equal to 0 so this will reduce to this now we know that cos minus x is nothing but cos x itself so it will become 2 sin 4x cos x minus sin 4x is equal to 0 now we can take sin 4x as common so it will become sin 4x into 2 cos x sorry 2 cos 2x minus 1 equal to 0 now you can see that a product equal to 0 so either this quantity must be equal to 0 or this one must be equal to 0 so we have either sin 4x is equal to 0 or 2 cos 2x minus 1 equal to 0 now sin 4x is equal to 0 means 4x must be a multiple of n pi isn't it we know that sin x is equal to 0 whenever the angle is a multiple of n pi so 4x must be a multiple of n pi or 
cos 2 to cos 2x is equal to minus 1 equal to 0 which implies cos 2x is equal to 1 by 2. Now x is a multiple of 4, 4x is a multiple of pi implies x is a multiple of n pi by 4. So x is a multiple of pi by 4. So x is equal to n pi by 4 in the first case if sin x sin 4x is equal to 0. Now coming on to the second case cos 2x is equal to 1 by 2 that means cos 2x is equal to cos pi by 3 correct. Now this is of the form cos x is equal to cos y. We return cos pi by 3 because cos pi by 3 equals 1 by 2. Now cos x is equal to cos y implies x is equal to 2n pi plus or minus y. That means here instead of x we have 2x. 2x is equal to 2n pi plus or minus y. Instead of y we have pi by 3. So we return that. Therefore x is equal to 2n pi plus or minus pi by 3 whole divided by 2. That means x is equal to n pi plus or minus pi by 6. So we have either x is equal to n pi by 4 or x is equal to n pi plus or minus pi by 6. So that is the end of example number 23. Now we shall do the last example from this session. We have to solve 2 cos square x plus 3 sin x is equal to 0. It is very simple. Let us rewrite this as cos square x is equal to 1 minus sin square x is, is in it plus 3 sin x is equal to 0. Now we shall operate this bracket so it will become 2 minus 2 sin square x plus 3 sin x is equal to 0. Now let me just reconstruct this as 2 sin square x minus 3 sin x minus 2 equal to 0. What I have done is I just multiplied the entire quantity with a uh, with a minus sign so that it will reduce to a standard quadratic equation. So it is of the form 2x square minus 3x minus 2 is equal to 0. So we can factorize this quantity as 2x plus 1 into x minus 2 isn't it. So we get the same result. So instead of x we have sin x and instead of, so it, instead of x square we have sin square x. So when we factorize this quadratic polynomial, it will become 2 sin x plus 1 into sin x minus 2 equal to 0, isn't it? So, 1 among this product must be equal to 0. So, either this equal to 0 or this equal to 0. So, when this equal to 0, 2 sin x plus 1 equal to 0, it implies sin x is equal to minus 1 by 2. And... When sin x minus 2 is equal to 0, it implies sin x is equal to 2, isn't it? So, this is the two possibilities. But this is not possible because the maximum value of sin x is 1. So, here sin x is equal to 2 is not possible. So, we can directly eliminate that possibility. Now, the only possibility is sin x is equal to minus 1 by 2. We know that sin x is negative in the third quadrant and sin pi by 6 is equal to 1 by 2, isn't it? So, we have sin pi plus pi by 6 equal to minus sin pi by 6 equal to minus 1 by 2. Correct. So, we have this is equal to sin x is equal to sin pi plus pi by 6. Since sin pi plus pi by 6 is equal to minus 1 by 2. And this is equal to sin x is equal to sin 7 pi by 6. This is of the form sin x is equal to sin y. And we get x is equal to that. So, the solution is x is equal to n pi plus minus 1 the whole raised to n into 7 pi by 6 n element of z. So, this is the general solution of this given equation. Similarly, by using these three important results or theorems, we can easily find the general solution of any such equation, trigonometric equation. So, I hope you understood the method of finding principal solution and general solution of a trigonometric equation and how to use these three theorems while we solving a trigonometric equation. So, in the next class, we shall do the exercise questions from this session as well as we can begin the new chapters. So, wait for the next videos. Till then, bye-bye.